This is Chandler Waller for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm delighted to be joined by a £140 contender, Alex Sorcido. First and foremost, Alex, how are you doing? Good, good, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, no, pleasure to have you on the channel. We've never had you on the channel before, to my knowledge, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, but how, how have you been finding lockdown so far? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been good. It's been good. It's staying with family. I mean, it's, it's not a good time. You know, it's not a good time being in this pandemic, but, but staying healthy, uh, with the family, uh, you know, and, and staying ready as well, like boxing wise, just in case things get back rolling, you know, get back in, into to going. Uh, but no, no, everything is good. Everything is going good. What sort, of, what sort of training are you able to do whilst you're in lockdown? Do you have, like, a key to the gym or...? I actually got a, a storage unit. I uh, rented a storage unit. So I uh, set up a boxing gym in there, you know, hang the boxing bag and, uh, yeah, and doing my, my runs outside, um, working with my strength and conditioning coach, uh, you know, outside, not in the gym. Uh, you know, just doing what we can, doing what we can to just have inspired. You know, that's the only thing that we would need a couple of weeks of sparring before going into a fight. Yeah, that's it. What sort of, like, what did you have lined up or what were you sort of, uh, what were you sort of looking into before uh, quarantine sort of ensued? Well, I had a fight lined up uh, for April 25th in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be against uh Frederick uh Frederick sent his last name. Uh Kim his name just flew away right now. I was just about to say it. Uh well we had a fight lined up for April twenty fifth in Las Vegas. Uh I was I had already been in camp for uh I believe six weeks. I have like another six weeks to go. Um and yeah, I mean Things happen for a reason. Things happen for a reason. Uh, I believe I just have to stay ready uh, in case, like I said, in case things get back and going so I can get back in there. Um, you know, I'm at a time coming from a loss that I have to, you know, I have to fight and I have to sh get back into the into my position again. So uh, just waiting and, you know, enjoying the time with the family as well because when it comes to training training in LA I'm training in LA and you know it's it was six weeks away from my kids and from my fiance from the family is uh it's hard too but it's uh the sacrifice that that comes with it mm. um you obviously you you faced Maurice Hooker uh you dropped him in the second round and uh you know until it sort of seemed that you know, you got caught with that right hand, which seemed to unsettle you. Uh, was it the the cut that you suffered? Was it possibly complacency after dropping him? What did you feel that went wrong for you in that fight? It was many things. It was many, many, many things from the cut um, to the weight loss before the fight. Because, um, like, after the Lenny the Pavinia fight, it was such a tough fight. I just had to take some time off the gym, which I never had in my whole life. and. Uh, in that time off, I gained so much weight. I gained, I mean, I lost so much boxing abilities, uh, you know, in those two months that I was away from the gym. And I get the call for the World Championship fight. I go back into camp. I'm 50 pounds overweight. And I, I believe that's one of the main reasons. Uh, another one is the cut. Came in the fifth round. Uh, I got cut in the fifth round, went to the corner, told me, my coach, I was cut, and I mean, nobody worked on the cut in the fifth round, I believe. It was fifth or sixth round. I haven't watched the fight myself. I just remember this happened. Uh, I got cut. I went back to the corner. I told the coach, hey, I got cut. And then he looked at the cut. He said, it's a very small cut. Uh, nobody worked on the cut. They didn't do anything. Uh, okay, here comes the next round, and all the blood starts going in my eye, and uh, you know, boom, I get caught with that, that shot. There was many things, many things that came that, you know, that helped me realize as a fighter, uh, you know, 
I'm gonna go back in there and, and show there was there was a lot more of Alex Alcedo that uh, that everybody saw that night. You know, it was just a bad night. Uh, and uh, hey, you know, get back to it. Uh, hopefully, I get my rematch one day. If not, uh, I'm gonna go on to I mean bigger things for sure. You obviously uh, you split with Abel Sanchez after that fight. Um, like upon reflecting on that sole loss of yours, was it was it was it mainly the cut that sort of convinced you to make a change in your team, or were there other aspects of it as well? Uh, no, it had been many things. Uh, I mean, I would did five fights with Abel Sanchez, and for those fights, I was I went over that after the first fight. I talked to my managers and the team, like you know, about moving trainers because of things that we've seen, you know, and I won by knockout and I just don't know why I was so comfortable like that. I kept winning by knockout and after every fight, we would be like, you got to change trainers into something. Like, we were mad about something, you know, like, in the weigh-in or before the fight or something and the fight would, would end up by knockout or, like, a good win, you know, and I just got comfortable with winning like that when I know there was a lot more to show, you know, a lot more head movement, a lot more. I just needed a trainer to be there working with me one-on-one. -on -one and, uh, yeah, I mean, we just, there was many things, many things that came uh, after that fight that, uh, you know, I, I'm i 25 years old. I'm, I'm It's at a good time to, I realized everything at a good time. And now it's, no, let's go. It's go time. Put me on. I mean, what what was it like? Because you talk about that, how you were so confident going into that fight or leading up to that fight where you were knocking guys out like left, right and centre. What was it like? I know that obviously taking it, taking your first defeat is hard for a lot of fighters. What was it like for you, like mentally, to deal with? Because you you did take some time out of the ring as well, obviously to make changes in your team as well. But what was it like that whole year out? No, it was tough. It was tough mentally and just uh, you know, I was, just, I was just being so hard on myself. Cause, I mean, all that was because of my fault. I mean, I I, I could have came back, stayed in shape, and. You know, it was just, I just got, I don't know, it was just the most, uh, you know, it was just a learning experience, big learning experience. Uh, and now, like I said, I, I'm, I'm very motivated to get back on top, uh, fight the best fighters, get the best names I can fight uh, before I retire and leave my name marked in the sport of boxing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you obviously did get back to winning ways, so we, we will talk about that. Um, you got with, back to winning ways, like I said, against Rod Salker in November, uh, you stopping him in the first round. So a sort of, you know, a, a good comeback in a way, obviously not for rounds. It's not ideal like that, but good to obviously go out and put on a show. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, I mean, that opponent, Rod Salker, it was not somebody, when they said the name Rod Salker, I... I actually, when I talked to my manager and talked to him, see if we could get a different name, somebody better, uh, you know. But after talking to my new trainer there, but it was like coming off a loss, coming off a year off, uh, new trainers. New, so they, they wanted to see, I don't know, it was just, uh, you know. But it was a good win. It was a good win, very good win, first round knockout. Uh, so here here we are on, like, let's, uh, like I said, it's just now – Let's get those kind of uh, those kind of wins until we get uh, a good name in there, you know, uh, or get that rematch again. Uh, hopefully, we get a. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes. You know, I'm staying motivated. And I'm staying ready. You you obviously mentioned the the rematch with Maurice Hooker, and you know you seem quite keen to be able to get that if you can. Um, obviously, we don't know when you know boxing will return for a start, and then if his fight with Progre goes ahead and. And, you know, a series of things, really, that could happen. But how do you get back into that position? And do you feel with the – you've made the changes in your team and strength and conditioning, do you feel like that's the, the changes that you need to defeat Maurice Hooker? Yeah, no, I'm confident. It was just 
I think it was the moment. There was many things that happened, you know, in the that that I learned from. Uh, now it's a different time. It's a different Alex Olcedo, different team. Like I said, I am I'm ready for for what's coming. Uh, yeah, let's 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 wait for this pandemic to go away and everything to to get better, you know. But uh, boxing wise, uh, we'll be ready for. for the, the big guys with the big names. I mean, that's that's what I want, and uh, I want to, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just staying ready, staying ready, and and focused. You you mentioned at the start of this interview that um, making the weight for that fight uh, wasn't great, um, and uh, you know, it's I, I don't know what how you're what it's like for you to make weight now, but is it inevitable that you will move up to uh, 147 at some stage in your career? Uh, of course, of course. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm 25 years old and I believe I'm going to move up. Uh, but right now, the focus is at 140. The focus at 140, there's there's no problem making 140. I said there was many things that happened for that fight. Uh, there's no problem making 140. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I'm gonna make 47, maybe even 54. We'll see. I mean, just where, but there's a lot of things I have to do at 140 first before you know before I can do move up. Mm -hmm. In that case, then, as you you are gonna be sticking around at 140, uh, how do you assess sort of get back into that position to challenge for a world title? When who do you see as the? Sorry, let me rephrase. How do you see your route obviously get into the back to challenging for a world title? Uh, just winning fights, winning fights uh, by knockout like that. Like I was just knocking guys out and and just winning fights. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna take me back back to there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see who we fight next. What happens next? Uh, but I think winning. I mean, just winning and staying focused is gonna give me that. Who do you consider? Cons sorry, who do you consider as the number one at 140 pounds right now? I mean, there's two belts are divided right now. There's two to Jose Ramirez and two to Josh Taylor. Uh, but if that fight between them two happens, I see Jose Ramirez winning. Uh, hopefully, I can get one of them before they do fight or after they fight. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know that's that's a fight that that I actually want right now. I mean, one of them two guys. It's, I mean, they're the champions. You know, it's we want the belts. Uh, it's just let's see let's see what happens after all this clears up. Uh, like I said, I have to stay ready because I know uh, that I want to get back on top, and and uh, it's, it's you know it's just gonna take. A win or two or three. <laughs> you mentioned uh, that you were going to pick Jose Carlos Ramirez to win that fight against Josh Taylor if they do meet. Um, that's obviously how you how you see it going. But as far as like how the fight will play out and how the stars will clash, how do you see it going? Uh, I just see Jose Ramirez out punching him. Because Josh Taylor is a guy that can fight and, and, and go all 12 rounds. But I think Jose Ramirez, is, uh, he could throw a lot more punches. And, and he's a very good body puncher. So I, I don't know how Josh Taylor will react to that. Uh, that's, that's probably why I see him because of the body punching. And, and uh, you know, a little bit more of the Mexican style into that fight. I know you're obviously, you know, you said you're keen to challenge for a world title and, you know, there are two belt holders at the moment. Uh, do you also feel that it may, it may be beneficial to, you know, wait for that undisputed fight to happen and the titles may get vacated, one of them may move up to 147? It's all ifs and buts and maybes, but do you feel like that's also a possibility for you? I don't really care. I want a, I want a world title around my way, so I, I don't care what they, what happens between them or... Yeah, it's just I want that. I want one of those titles on my waist, and I'm not going to be happy or satisfied until I get one. Okay. Uh, there's just uh, just one fight that I'd like to get your thoughts on. Um, obviously, you shared the ring with Maurice Hooker. Uh, Regis Progo was meant to be meant to be fighting him uh, last month. 
hopefully we can see that fight be rescheduled. Uh, how do you see that fight going? Uh, hopefully Regis beats him up. <laughs> I mean, Regis, he's, I mean, I, I, I know Regis, we were the same management team, so hopefully he beats him up, you know, and tears him up. But it, this is boxing. We'll see what happens. Uh, hey, I, I want my rematch. That's just what matters. Uh, but no, yeah, hopefully, I mean, hopefully Regis tears him up. So that's, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, Alex, uh, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate you jumping on the Zoom call with me. And uh, yeah, look forward to doing many more interviews with you in the future, mate. Sounds good, man. No, thank you. Thank you. And now uh, I'm going to get back to work and get, get back to, to the number one on top of the 140. And then we'll do another interview for sure. Or yeah. even before that. <laughs>